Hey everyone, welcome to a new bus stop. Today I got Drew Settlers on with me and we're going to talk about Mass Transit 8.1. 8.1 has been in the in the works for a couple of months now. We kind of slowed this down because there's a lot of changes we want to do and anytime you do a point one release it just it sounds really cool to actually put some stuff into it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Say hey Drew. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks for stealing my thunder. <laughs> what thunder? So, Chris, what's in 8.1? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, you can tell the heat is hot outside and there's nothing better to do than be inside. Uh, what is an 8.1? 8.1 is, it's going to have some cool stuff. Um, we we took a step back and looked at a lot of the existing APIs. And so, th so let me back up. So this started off as I had a request. Someone was like, hey, I'm trying to use iPublish endpoint from Mediator to publish to a bus. And I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds really cool. Let's do that. And so we went and looked to see what was going to do that. And Mass Transit has a couple of cool features. First, it has a mediator, which is completely separate from the bus, and it's entirely in memory with immediate execution, similar to Mediate R. But it also has a multi-bus feature where you can have multiple bus instances in the same container. So not only, I mean, Mass Transit differentiates itself from a lot of other frameworks. It allows you to have multiple endpoints within a single process really easily. It lets you uh, have multiple buses within the same container, each with their own endpoints. And then each bus can have riders, which can be Event Hub, Kafka, all these other things that are pushing data through that kind of combined thing. And so before you get too far, like what's quickly, what's the difference between an endpoint and a bus? Good question. So a bus is really just like, because we say the word bus, uh, typically a bus is connected to a broker and the broker is the whole logical entity of a bus. So it could be a bunch of different endpoints. If you think about it in broker concepts, it's a space where pub sub happens. So it doesn't really mean anything. Yes, we have an iBus interface, but that's just a construct. You could have 15 different programs all with their own iBus talking to the same broker, and that overall construct of all those applications is a bus. And it's also a collection of endpoints, right? Correct. And there's a whole bunch of endpoints in a bus that consume things. Each endpoint has a one-to-one -one mapping to a queue, and you can have multiple instances pointed at the same endpoint, aka Q, consuming competing consumer load balancing across those engines. So it makes it super easy to scale up with any of the scale up tools, whether it's Kubernetes, container apps, whatever. And then so and then what's a writer? So we've talked about buses and endpoints. What's a writer real quick? So writers there's a concept, and I think we talked about this in another bus stop about streams versus queues. And streams are generally sources of data or places that we sync data to. Uh, but they're different from a broker because a broker supports queue semantics, a.k.a. message consumption. So we're consuming messages from a queue, whereas with, with streams, we're really reading from an offset and going forward, whether that's oldest, whether that's the last 24 hours, whatever that is. And generally, we're streaming those events in to some application that we want to do something with. Now, riders are an addition to a bus instance to where you can say, oh, I want to configure a rider and I want to also get messages from Kafka to do X with them. And you can consume messages from Kafka, you can produce messages out to Kafka topics, and you can also interoperate with the bus. So if you want to do Q type operations, a you know dispatch level application stuff, you can use like RabbitMQ along with Kafka to do the asynchronous processing of stuff that you read from Kafka that you may or may not be able to process immediately. All right, thank you. Yeah. So we had someone that was wanting to go from mediator to the publish endpoint. Right. That was so the original request. Right, they wanted to be able to publish events on RabbitMQ from their mediator consumers. And this all comes out of this whole crazy clean architecture thing where you know a controller never talks to a component it talks to a mediator and the mediator talks to the component and so on and so forth and all this fun stuff so and i know we had a bus stop about that as well but i think it's a little extraneous but hey people want to do what they want to do and they want to port their existing architectures over so i'm not going to knock it everybody has you know it depends you know it always depends um so i started looking at how we could do this because the way mass transit works is when you're consuming a message 
you have a consume context. And we wanted this to, and the consume context generally is used to resolve I publish endpoint. Well, if you're in a mediator and you ask for I publish endpoint, you're going to get consume context, which is mediator, which means you aren't going to get out to RabbitMQ. So anyway, that was the impetus that kind of started this un underlying conversation of how do we really support multibus and mediator and all of these different things better. And, you know, two, three hundred file changes later, we actually have 8.1. And so there, there's a number of different changes. Things that use scope and use context on the bus now use that bus registration context. So when you configure a bus and say you're using RabbitMQ, it's like context config is the arguments for whatever broker you're configuring. And context is how you resolve things from the container. It's how you say configure endpoints. It's how you say configure consumer. And it's an underneath that is a service provider. Well, with 8.1, that is now fully scoped to whatever you're configurating, whether it's mediator, a bus, a multibus instance, or a rider. And because of how we built that and made it super consistent across everything, now, when you're in Mediator and you resolve I publish endpoint, it will get you the I publish endpoint of the bus. Or you, if you're using multibus, you can actually ask for the publish endpoint of a specific bus. So it's the way we support all of this is we key things through a bind type, which is just a generic interface that we register everything in the container with for a bus registration. And I think I even saw something lately where like, I think it was on Twitter, David Fowler was talking about how they're doing keyed container resolution now with mm -hmm. like strings and a bunch of stuff. MT has done this for three or four years with these bind types to where we can actually bind another type like I bus versus I second bus into, so that all the types are bound into that other type space. I think it's a great way to do it. It's strongly typed and it's worked really well for us. But now with 8.1, that's super consistent. So that made us kind of take a whole look back and change some things. And because of that, we've had to add some new overloads and like consumer definitions. And it's really broad reaching, which is why we, we actually had all this work done. And then we bumped it to 8.1 so that I could release 8.0.16 with a bunch of fixes. Now we're about to release 8.1 and it's going to have these changes. So when we talk about that, the other big piece that comes with it is the word obsolete. And I know, Drew, you and I have talked about this. And you know, every now and then someone will ask in Discord, it's like, hey, I'm calling use retry. And I'm like, yeah, you really shouldn't. Well, but it's not obsolete. Yeah, but it's it's frowned upon. You know, We don't really want to use that. Which is that. obsolete. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, And there's a pragma to say, ignore that I'm using an obsolete method. So with 8.1, we're going to loop through a couple of times. And just anything that is frowned upon or we don't want you to use, we're going to mark it as an obsolete. We're going to try to put a link to the docs of like, this is the preferred syntax. Yes, this old method still works and you might need it because of something that you're porting an old application because that's always been like my key drivers. I don't want to break people upgrading. When they upgrade and everything doesn't compile, that's frustrating. And then they have to go change things and then they wonder if their tests are going to work and it just creates frustration. So I really wanted to make sure that we could have a good move forward experience. Well, we're at the point now where there is, there's 15 years of code in mass transit. We need to be able to say, hey, you really shouldn't be doing this. And if you are and have a good reason, pragma out the warning for the obsolete because there's really no, analyzers don't work, nobody installs them, or they just don't properly report stuff. I mean, there's a number of different ways to do these kind of things, but obsolete is consistent. It tells you you're doing something that isn't really recommended but you can override the warning if you really want to. I'm not going to make them errors, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so awesome. that's, one, that's one of the things we're doing in there. Another piece is, you know, you're digging through code and you're kind of looking at stuff. And I also kind of looked at what hadn't been updated to like the newest syntax. Because with 8.0, we changed a lot of syntax, made a lot of things simpler on top of what we already had. And... I started looking at job consumers because one of the questions came up about registering job consumers. And I mean, job consumers are used a lot. They're super cool. And while I was working on the database transport, I was trying to get something working with job consumers. And I was like, man, this needs a fresh, fresh. So I, I made it so the job consumers can just be added to the container. You no longer have to configure a service instance. If you want to add the saga endpoints for the job consumers, it's now just add job sagas, and you can configure all the different repository types the same way you do with other sagas. You just say add job sagas dot entity framework, boom, 
you're done. You can use an existing DB context. All that is there. No more special service instance. All that stuff is gone. It's handled internally. I'm going to obsolete all the previous syntaxes so that people don't use it anymore because now you don't have to. But it still works. And so the obsolete will just be like, hey, here's the docs with the updated configuration guide. If you're using the old and busted, it still works, but we really want you on the new hotness. So. So those are the kind of things that we're doing for 8.1 just to kind of guide people because I, so why is this a thing? Because apparently a lot of people like chat GPT and I like it too. I think it's great for doing things, but they go and ask chat GPT questions like, how do I do this? And chat GPT is two years out of date and it will quote some old mass transit seven syntax. It'll tell you, you need packages that don't exist anymore. And it'll use methods that aren't there because people, are actually, I've actually found an AI generated blog post about how to build a new application with Mass Transit the other day. And it was like it was written three years ago because it was all the old chat GPT syntax. I mean, I went and asked the same questions. And so it's that's another reason pushing for this big obsolete tag is that people are using things that they're seeing from three and four year old code samples using that as if it was new and that just isn't the case. So it's to help people kind of realize, hey, if you're using current versions, don't use these things. So so yeah, but other than that, it's taken longer than expected because it's nice out and it's summer, but now it isn't nice out, it's 105 degrees, so. Well, this sounds like a great release. Do we know, do we have an idea of when you think it's gonna drop? Like, do you have a lot of work left to do on it or is it? are you just down to like buttoning it up? I could drop it tomorrow, but the documentation isn't updated yet. And because I want to do a couple more passes through the obsolete, I want to take a little time. So I would say shooting for mid-August, definitely Excellent. before the end of August. Um, it's I've been working on the database transport and making sure that that can be supported. So some changes in the core packages to enable things have happened, and that's kind of drug that out a little bit too. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a good release. It'll be coming up soon. So. All right. Well, thanks for the update, Chris. It's nice to hear that Mass Transit continues to move forward, and I think we're all looking for the latest updates. And, man, I'm ready to see if I've got any obsoletes buried someplace <laughs> deep in my code. Bring it on. <laughs> That's right, because you use Mass Transit now. All right. We'll see you at the next bus stop.